All right, so in the last video, we got our API deployed out to a Lambda function. And now what we want to do is try to get this into an actual like REST API using API Gateway. Let's go to that API directory. I'm going to say npm init. Um, we're not going to do like a, a, a proper mono repo approach. Like you could probably use turbo repo so you have a top level package JSON. I'm just going to put the entire, you know, node application here. And then we're going to install Express. So we can say npm install express. The other library I'm going to try to bring in is called CoGenie Serverless Express. I'm going to go ahead and just copy this. Now the reason we're bringing this in is because this event is not really compatible with how Express does like its request and its response objects. And so you have to have some type of adapter so that the events that come in from AWS can be translated to what works in Express. And then the results that come back from Express can be sent back to AWS. So we're going to just copy this example. You basically can just import this. And then you basically want to export your handler here. And then inside of here, you can actually say const express, and then you can like spin up an express app. I'll actually make two endpoints. I'm going to do the slash here for the top level, and then I'll say like testing, and then that'll just return testing. And so now instead of exporting this handler here, you actually just need to set up your express app like this. You define some endpoints. And then finally, you pass that to your serverless express, which is going to wrap the inputs and the outputs of your express app and get that to work when you deploy it out to your Lambda. So now we need to modify the Docker file a little bit so that we can handle the package JSON and install the dependencies. I'm going to add a git. Um, actually, I'm going to add a Docker ignore here. And I want to ignore the node modules because we don't want to include the Mac OS node modules. We want to actually have these be installed here. So I'm going to copy everything into Lambda root. Um, I think I just do this. I think technically you want this to be good with caching. You could do the copy afterwards. So I could first of all copy the package JSON to my Lambda task root. Uh, we probably also want the package lock like this. And then we can run the npm install and then we can copy all the other stuff. The reason we're doing this is because the way Docker works is going to only rerun these commands if the package JSON or the package lock has changed. And then when you run it again for another deployment, it'll be very fast because it doesn't have to like rerun all this stuff. I, I think this should be good, hopefully. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to just do another Terraform uh, apply. So let's go to the infra folder. And then I'll say auto approve like this. That should run. It should build the image and then get that deployed out the ECR and then update the Lambda function with the new version. But then also inside this API TF file, we're going to use cursor to spin up an API gateway and hook that to our Lambda. So I'm going to say create an API gateway resource and hook it up to my Lambda so that I can have a REST API. Now, what is API gateway? If I go to API gateway, it's a way to basically put a REST API, like, you know, things that you can do curl requests to in front of Lambdas, you can put it in front of other things as well. Uh, this is one approach. I think you can also use CloudFront to basically have some routing rules to point to your Lambda if you want to. Um, but let's just kind of look through this code real quick and make sure that it is doing what we think it is. So we're going to make an API gateway v2 with a protocol type of HTTP so that we can actually do like an HTTP request to it. And then once you make the API gateway, you actually have to like create a stage. So you can create like different environments, quote unquote, or like stages. So you can have like a dev, a prod, or a testing stage. We're just going to go ahead and create a prod stage and point it to that API gateway lambda that we defined up here. Here's where you can define a little bit of access logs. So if you want the logs to print out when people make requests, this is how you can kind of do it. And then down here, there should be a CloudWatch log group which is going to store all those logs. So as users make requests through APIs, you can view those. So these two are where we're basically saying, hey, when someone does like any type of get request or post request or whatever to our API gateway resource, go ahead and send that to our Lambda function. And then our Lambda function can figure out how to actually like process it and respond. And of course, we have some permissions down here. This is so that you can allow the Lambda to be invoked by the API gateway. So we're saying, hey, this function should be able to be invoked by this source ARN. And then we're going to go ahead and output the API gateway URL. So let's run this. Again, it's AI generated, so it could be wrong. But let's just go ahead and run this, and it should hopefully be right. All right, looks like that's done. And now we have an actual like API URL. And then up here, I'm going to say slash testing and just verify that we get back that message that we expected. So it does print out testing hello world. Now, I will say that the root is not actually returning anything. Um, there might be a little bug with how we have that set up. 
not found in internal server error. So if for some reason, this is actually failing when we hit this top level. So we'll have to kind of debug that. But I mean, we successfully deployed an API gateway and it is actually invoking our express service. So we can then start processing requests and sending some responses back. Anyway, to show that this is working, let's go to our API gateway service. So API gateway, you should see it drop down and then we can see our gateway exists right here. And then it's also connected to our Lambda function. So if you go to integrations, you should see that it is attached to this Lambda function here. You can click on this and open it up and that'll take us to the Lambda function. If we go to monitor, we can view the logs once again. Let's just go ahead and view the CloudWatch logs and then click on this one. And then we should hopefully see some type of errors. Okay, so unhandled promise rejection ee.on is not a function type error. So there's like a little issue when we hit the top level route of our application for some reason, but it doesn't happen when we hit the testing endpoint. So I would be curious to basically just add a catch all handler. So I'm gonna say add a 404 not, not found handler for any endpoints that we haven't actually defined. Okay, so we can do an app.use there if it's anything that's like not um, already captured, I think. And then let's just redeploy this one more time. It shouldn't take too much time to do. All right, let's try it again. I'm gonna go ahead and just go here to the top level and we get back not found. So the top level slash isn't working. And honestly, I don't know what the issue is. I don't wanna spend too much time, time trying to figure this out. It could either be a bug with this library that's not handling the top level slash, or I just need to add like another route without this proxy in it so that it'll actually route the top level to my Lambda. But I think sometimes the easiest thing you could actually do is just prefix everything with API. And now everything should hopefully work. So like, let's just deploy this one more time. Besides, you probably want to version your APIs anyway. So like you probably have like a V1 or a V2 here or something. All right, that's all done. Let's try it again. I'm just going to do slash prod API and see if we get something back. Uh, we should get back hello world. Okay, there it is. Now we can do slash testing. Cool. In all honesty, like typically your REST API, you'd actually have a noun here, like the resource users, uh, people, pets, Courses, you know, so like you want to actually have like a top level slash in most cases, but I would probably say that there's just additional Terraform code we have to add in so that we can configure the API gateway a little bit more properly. Um, and I would assume it's probably just add a slash so they can actually handle just the top route. But this is good. I mean, you have an API and it works, and now you can actually start invoking that from your UI. So, so hopefully, from watching this video, you learned a little bit about API Gateway. It's how you can set up an HTTP server in front of your Lambda functions to start handling and serving requests. And then if you want to use Express, there is this adapter here that you can use to put in front of your Express app so that your Lambda knows how to take in the request and also pass that to Express and then take the response and send that back to Lambda to be sent to the user. All right, have a good day and happy coding.